our friends. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to make a monster mini book, meaning we're going to use some cute papers with monsters on it, and we're going to make a little 4x6 sized brag book. I'm going to walk you through how to make this one in the tutorial that follows, and I told you you can make two books out of it, so this is the second one that I made off camera, and I'm just going to give you a quick flip so you can see how your little mini book might turn out. I used some pictures from past Halloweens and some of the really cute printables that our ladies from the Pink Crafty Cottage have made. So the, this one is by Suze, and you'll see one from Sloan in just a minute. But so I just wanted to show you how a second one turned out and how it might look once you add some of your pictures in it. So this one I made for my daughter using some of her old, older Halloween uh, pictures. And this is the one, like I said, that I'm going to show you how to make together. And oh, here, I wanted to show you, make sure I showed you that there are some printables also by Sloan, who's one of our Pink Crafty Cottage members. And I'm here hearing the family monster right now. That's our cat. She is in the same room and won't stop meowing. So I just wanted to tell you give a quick little intro and um, tell you that this weekend on Saturday there should be a Zoom and I am planning to come to that so I can answer any questions that you might have after watching the tutorial. It's my first time filming a sort of craft with me so some mistakes were made and that you can't always see uh, the scoreboard and the measurements but I think you can still see enough of what I'm doing to figure out um, what's going on. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you find it helpful and you're having a great time uh, with our October daily and that you make one of these cute little brag books. So the first thing we need to do to get started is to choose four 12 by 12 papers. Cut each of them to six by 12. You're just going to cut them in half and you want to make sure that your pattern orientation is horizontal. So make sure you check both the sides of your paper for the pattern before you cut it. Which as you can see is pretty important if you have a directional pattern. And I chose a variety of patterns, some that have a large pattern and some that are simpler, like this green with a grid, because I thought that this would be nice uh, journaling. So then you wanna take your papers and you want to decide uh, your order of for your book. So I'm gonna use this as my cover and it has a orange inside, so I think because it has orange in these circles, it would go well with this paper because of the eyes being circular. And so that has, there's gonna be a lot of orange in this book because of it being a Halloween book. So I'm gonna go with this one next. I think those two look nice next to each other. And then I will probably put this black one because there's black in the eyes and then this will say Happy Halloween on the inside. So I'm just going to look at my papers and see if I like the colors and the order of patterns. I have a scoreboard just to make this easier, but you don't have to use one. You can just score it with a ruler. So I'm gonna score at um, four inches. And so this one, I want it to be four inches and I know that I'm going to fold this in half. Let's see, I think I'll be able to cut that one eventually. So I'm just gonna score all of them at four inches unless I think I wanna make a pocket on one of the sides. So here, I'm gonna score this at four. Yeah, okay. Score this one at, hmm, I think I'm gonna score this one at two because I want to make a little pocket at the front 
of it. So I'm going to fold it over and then I'm going to look again and I'm going to look at four inches. And so that is going to give me space to have a pocket. And then eventually I might just cut that flap off. And then I'm going to leave my cover hole until I get everything arranged in the order that I want. So I've decided that I want to make this pocket in the front. I'm going to look at cutting things down now. This particular book, since it has so few pages, sometimes if you have a lot of pages, what will happen is you'll get a lot of overlap. But you don't have to worry about that too much with this book because, like I said, there's not that many pages in it. And so now that I see kind of how I want it, and I'm only gonna put in one pocket here because I'm also going to make a pocket on my cover. So I am going to cut everything down to about to uh, four inches. And the easiest way to do this is to just sort of line everything up, check your score lines again, and then just cut with your blade. Just be very careful on the first one because you don't want to cut that pocket. So line up where you're going to cut, and then I suggest lifting that up, and then you'll have an extra piece of paper. So as you can see, that looks really nice. I'm gonna cut this one down at four. And this one is not as important if I don't get an exact, um, exactly four, because it's gonna nestle inside of this. And so I do want it to fit very snugly inside and have no overlap, okay? And then here is my last piece. This is gonna be my center one. So I am just going to check this one more time and I can see how there's that little bit over, there's that little bit of orange. I am going to trim slightly under. Just gonna check my score lines again. Straighten it out if I need to. I'm just gonna cut slightly or exactly where that line is. So you see how I just got a teeny tiny bit off? And then I'm gonna fit that in, slide that in. Perfect, see how there's no overlap? Everything lines up really nicely. That's good. Then this is my cover page. And because I have a little pocket here, I want this to be exact. Now, I do like to plan a little bit of a gap for the cover because I know that it's the book is gonna expand. And so see how, I don't know if you can totally see, but I've just left a slight gap where you can see how it, the orange is a little bit bigger. I'm gonna fold it over. Double check, great, there's just a slightest little gap there. And then I am going to score this side, or I'm gonna fold this side. And what I like to do just to make sure that I get this the right size is I will match this up with my edge and just fold it. So I know it's a slightly irregular size. I'm gonna fold that down. Okay. And then fix the score line. Double check to make sure everything is straight and smooth. I'm gonna place that in. Okay, I could, I could see it from the side. I like how it places in. I see that my inside pages fit in there nicely. This is going to become a flap at the back. So I know that it's gonna fold in, but I don't want it to be the full size. So I think I will, I will make it two and a half inches. 
I'm gonna go to two and a half. Just cut that flap off. Oh, I did it wrong. Oh well. <laughs> I'm going to have a smaller flap than I so thought. I think I'm actually gonna just cut that off and glue it back on. So that was what I was going to tell you that you can either fold it to make your flap or you can glue it on. The only thing is, is that the pattern won't quite match up, but I think when you're opening your book and closing and using it, you won't notice that so much. So, here we go. Let's look at our book. Double check that we like how it is. And I do. Oh, you know what? I got this mixed up when I put it in. I want meant for the black to be here. That's why you wanna double check everything before you glue things down. And the reason I like these two together is because this flap, again, the circle of the spider, I think that goes nicely with the multicolored circles over here. Check our order one more time. And there you have the basic book. So to buy my book, you can open it and you can staple, but I have always preferred a stitched binding. So I'm gonna show you really quick. Let me just make sure I'm in camera. Okay, so I like prefer a stitched binding. So I'm just gonna hold my book kind of up in the air. I'm going to kind of estimate where the middle is. I'm going to use my paper piercer and poke a hole in it. And then I'm just gonna go an equal distance in between my middle hole and the bottom of my book. I'm gonna poke um, another hole. Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna go air slightly closer to the bottom. So, and then I'm going to do the same thing at the top. So I now have three holes. Normally I would do a five hole stitch, but this is just a very thin book, so we don't need to have quite that much binding. I have already threaded my embroidery floss onto my needle. This is a six strand embroidery floss, and I have removed two strands already, and then just threaded it. So. The way you do it is you just hold your book together and I like to go from the outside in. Thread that in. And then I just leave a tail on the outside. And then I always go to the bottom one first for some reason. So I'm gonna go to the bottom hole and come back out. Then I'm gonna go up to my top hole and go back in. So see, now a lot of my basic binding is done. And then I'm going to go to the middle hole and come back out again. And as you can see, I have one side of my, yarn, um, my embroidery floss on one side of my binding, and I have the other side. So that just makes it easier to tie a knot. And then just check to make sure your, your embroidery floss is pulled fairly taunt, but not too taunt, because you don't want to rip any holes. And then I am just going to do a box knot, and I will snip the edges, because you don't need that much. Whoops. You don't need that much extra. And the way I estimate how much thread I need is I, when I'm threading my needle, I go, I just do about one, two lengths. I will take my, my, um, my embroidery floss and that's how I'll measure it. I'll put the end here and then I'll just circle around it. And I make sure, wanna make sure I have double the length of my book. That way I always have a little bit extra. And I just use embroidery floss, so it is relatively inexpensive. So if I'm throwing away some, it wasn't a huge investment. And you can put the binding inside. I think it looks cleaner to have it on the outside, so that's why mine is on the outside. And I am going to cover that up in just a few minutes. 
so you won't see the binding. So now what you need to do is you need to decide which color of your scraps you would like to use to make your binding. I think it would be best to use this black. So this book, like I said, it's about four inches uh, by six. So it's about a four by six inch book. So I think, let's see, here's my piece. I think this will be more than enough. And this is about a one and a quarter inch piece. So I'm gonna use a one and a quarter inch piece of, whoops, and I wanna make sure I cut it correctly this time. And I'm just going to cut a one and a quarter inch piece of paper. And then I am just going to kind of estimate where the middle is, score it, and then fold it over. Smooth that down. And then this is gonna be my binding piece. So as you can see, it's gonna cover right up that edge. And if you prefer a little bit wider of a, um, if you prefer this black part to be a little bit longer, just make it a little bit longer. Like I also think one and a half would have looked good too. So I'm just gonna turn this a little bit more. To attach your piece, you're just gonna wanna use whatever adhesive you like to use best. I am going to use wet glue. I have this um, Barely Art preci Precision Glue. And I like to use wet glue for certain things because it gives me a while. It gives me some wiggle time um, so that I can adjust the placement of my um, spine and I can make sure I like where it is and that it's all in place before I commit to it. When you're using, you know, double-sided tape, sometimes you don't have that wiggle time. So that is why I like the wet glue. And it is pretty strong wet glue, so, and it dries pretty fast. So you can just attach it and hold it for a couple seconds and it will pretty much be adhered. So like I said, now your little book, your cute little book has a nice finished look to it. It kind of looks like a composition book. I think that is a nice finished look. Then the last thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure you go through and you glue down your pockets. You can, this you can use a double stick tape if you want. You just will have less space to stick things in. So I'm gonna just stick that on. And put my, hold it down a little bit. So now I have made a pocket. And if I had uh, paid better attention to my dimensions, I would have had a pocket back here to glue down, but I didn't. So I need to glue this down still, and I'm just trying to decide if I like that, or actually, I think I like the black better. That's another reason why gluing it on yourself can be better. And I'm just gonna estimate, this is gonna be about two and a half inches, slightly under two and a half inches because of how I cut it. I like that better. Um, I don't have my hole punch with me because I'm filming this where I have better lighting, but I would probably put a notch in there, and so I'll probably do that when I'm finished. And then because this is that thin glue, I can easily put a pocket on. Like I said, you can use double stick tape. You are just going to lose a little bit of space. You will have to pay attention when you are cutting your tags to the size. So here we go. I'm just gonna get that on. And then I have created another pocket that I can stick stuff in. So that is the basic, uh, the, 
the base of my project that I have been making these for a long time. I think this is a great brag book size because it's four by six and it's really easy to just throw in your purse or give these as quick little gifts. If you use single-sided paper, you'll have one white side and that's great for embellishing, journaling. It gives you a nice journaling space. And a lot of times the paper pads that you can get at like Michael's or other big box craft stores, they are often single-sided and then, since they're more of a cardstock weight, they are great for stamping on. You don't have to worry about bleed through. So it really just depends on what kind of look you are going for. And now let's do a little light embellishing and finish up our book. So like I said, we have two pockets and let's make some tags out of our scraps. So let's see, what kind of tag? This one. We'll make a really cute tag. I am going to just cut right by the hair. Right, and then I'm just going to lightly fold this. I still have it rolled, and then I will just notch it. So that's one tag. And let's see, what other size tag? How wide is this? This is about, oh, this is about two and a half. So I will make another two and a half inch tag. This would be a little bit easier if I had not messed up my, um, if I, I would have this one for a tag, but I wanted my base to be a different. So let's see, and then how long is this? This is about a little over four and a half. So I will trim this to a little over four and a half. And now I have two great little tags. I will just hole punch these and turn them, you know, into actual tags. And you can put, let's see. Um, what looks best? I think this one looks best here. So there's one tag and then in the back I can put another tag. And since this is a monster book, what makes it a monster is the papers that I have chosen. And then I'm going to embellish it somehow. Let's see, I have a purple thing. I kind of don't like covering up that happy Halloween, but I guess it's on there several times. So maybe I will just put a piece of candy corn. I like that. I'm gonna embellish it. My title. Just put that on, like I said, it has, since it's a little bit of a wet glue, you have a couple seconds, but like just in that time, it's already like firmly on. It's small enough where you all of your pictures from Halloween could go in it and you have a great little gift to give away. So thanks so much for watching my tutorial on how to make our monster mini books. Um, like I said, I made this one together with you and then this is the second one that you can make. At the beginning, we cut our 12 by 12 papers into six by 12 sheets. We used half of them to make this book. And then I made another book with the remaining papers. And thanks so much for watching and thank you for being a part of the Pink Crafty Cottage.